Mr. Bright, you make the first $800 payment. Yes. Actually, that same day. Yes. And then two weeks later, you make another $800 payment. Yes. And two weeks after the second payment was made, you have the defendant here reach out and say, where's the third payment? Which kind of goes along with what she was saying about the verbal agreement, where, you know, every two weeks you'd be making a payment. That's not the case. Okay. What was it? And, and why TBD on the third payment? I uh, teach sports for learning to elementary uh, kindergarten through fifth. And summer break was going to go. And I knew I had two more checks coming to me before the summer break. And so I said, I don't know exactly when my next check's going to come, so I don't want to make a promise. I see. Without having, a, you know, a, an exact date. So worst case scenario, the third payment would be made when school started up back yes. in, what, in the fall? And that's what we discussed. Did he ever tell you that I'm going to be unemployed in the summer? No, Your Honor. Actually, he said quite the opposite. He was, had a new job starting the summer that was going to be able to help cover the payments. That's what he had told me. So you didn't get this third payment. When did you actually start reaching out to him, inquiring about when he was going to make this last payment? The last payment I first reached out, I believe it was maybe a day or two before that it was supposed to come up at that, that third two weeks out. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, you ready to make that last $800 payment? And he says, what $800 payment? It's 400 so on and so forth. It became this huge ordeal of uh, bickering back and forth. Okay, so he's telling you it's supposed to be 400 Right. And, and, he's, I, and he's directing you to the contract. And you say what? I said, you still told me you were gonna, that the agreement was to be an extra 400 because I was letting you make payments. And it just escalated and I, just, I was sitting there floored. I said, and I said, why do you think that I would try to bring you over an extra 400? Well, I have a question. So like, you, I, I, I you said that you don't know uh, Mr. Bright's girlfriend well. Correct. Why do you think that he needed to hide the real purchase price of this car from her? Because I know he's lied to her before. I've witnessed it, not over money, but that's why I figured maybe it was just something she didn't know about. And I wasn't trying to put anybody on blast. I was just trying to help a friend with a car. I didn't even, I was not even aware that she was gonna be coming to the sale. And we had not even talked about writing a contract. And in fact, she was the one insisted on writing it at the end of what, before smart. they left. That's and a good he thing. he kept telling her, no, we don't need that. But that's a good thing. You know writing a contract is a good yes, thing, right? Yes, I yeah, no, of course it is. And the thing is, is it wasn't very detailed. It didn't have, I, I wanted it to be it, very it was clear that if you didn't make the payments that there was, because I've had then that. Then why didn't you contribute to the contract? Because she took over it and did it without, basically she sat there and wrote it. She took your hand and a pen and made you sign? No, she did not make me sign. She didn't Honor. do that. You're right. All right, Judge Juarez. So, Mr. Bright, what I want to ask you is, Ms. Gwynn seems very adamant that there was a different agreement discussed. Can you, looking back, see any place where there may have been confusion? Because otherwise, she would just have to be making this up and completely lying out of thin air. And I will candidly tell you, I don't get that impression. Okay. Was $2,400 even ever discussed? No, we never discussed that. No. Okay, did you ever discuss three payments of $800? No, I did not. Did you ever discuss payments every two weeks? For the first two payments, my last two checks. But not the third? No, ma'am. Ms. Gwynn, here's what I'm struggling with. You repossessed the car. So before we talk about the legal details, let me just ask you this. Okay. You sold it to Mr. Gwynn for some amount. We don't even have to agree, but we all agree he paid you 1,600. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You then repossessed it. You then sold it again for 1,800. Yes. So how much money is that total? I'm terrible at math, but. $3,400. How is that fair that you basically got to sell the car twice? I don't even know how to answer, honestly. I I mean, he basically only owed you another $800, according to you. You got $1,800 instead. But I sold it to him for under Kelly Blue Book, and he dragged it out for, it was two months of no payments, and I didn't repossess it until September 14th. So it was two months without the last payment. Correct. So do you have any idea what your obligations were if you repossessed the car? No, no Your Honor. Because that may be the problem here. As one would <laughs> expect, when you repossess a car, when somebody only owes a portion of what the car cost, you don't just get to keep the entire amount that you repossess. Did you have any costs associated with repossessing the vehicle? Yes, I had to rekey it. Okay, how much was that? I believe it was in, I had that in the, on the- Oh, you gave us a receipt? Yes. Okay, yes. great. So other than the rekeying, any other costs associated with the repossession? No, I no. Don't. 